Hey golfers and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we've got a fun one for you. We have Elliot Lee, a member of the Valparaiso men's golf team, uh, going through a wedge gapping session with Larry Bobcut in the tour van at Minnetonka. They go through the bag, diagnose the issues that might be had with Elliot's current setup, and then Larry ultimately recommends a new setup for Elliot at the end of the session. So without further ado, let's go to the tour van with Larry and Elliot. So what do we play? What do we play? What do we play pitching wedge to go? Usually it's about 140, okay. 135, somewhere in there. Okay. All right. So that's really solid. So let's let's hit your let's hit your let's hit your approach wedge. Now were these were these irons fit for you? Uh yeah. Okay. Who did who did that? Uh I'm from Oregon. Some guy from Oregon. Okay. You're from Oregon and you went to and you go to Valparaiso? I know. How did you manage how did you manage to do that? An email. <laughs> wow, well, well, well yeah. you know, that worked. It's actually another guy from Oregon that's gonna be here later. Which is kinda of weird. Okay, so is this about our one twenty club, one twenty five? Yeah. You know, it, it your speed. It's pretty good to have about 15 yards in between wedges. Okay. Because if you don't, you know, even 15 to 20 yard. If otherwise, if it's too tight, think about it this way. If I'm hitting 140 yard pitching wedges, and now my gap wedge goes 130 yards, and my next wedge goes 120 yards, and my next one goes 100, now I got 110 to zero mm -hmm. to play from. So we, we want to spread that out. Okay. You know, I see spending as much time as I do in college golf now. I, I can see you guys going to players going to five wedges one of these days. Yeah. You know, because you can see you can see it in your game, right? Every once in a while, you're like, man, I wish I had a I wish I had a wedge that went a little bit shorter. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just a nice, calm, full swing instead of something weird. A lot different. Yeah, and the modern golf ball doesn't doesn't do well with with partial swings it's way better yeah. when you hit it full you get much more control okay so that one's pretty good we're pretty comfortable with that club too right mm -hmm. okay so let's see where so what's the next 54 yeah okay so let's see what let's see where that 54 goes because we're you know we're a solid 120 there which i like which is really good so where do we play what do we play this to go Hundred and five. Okay. Hundred ten. Okay. Usually, I think. And a typical college golfer has dirty golf clubs. Yeah. <laughs> so do we? Do you see any from going from the set gap wedge to that? Do you see any any differences in spin? Anything that concerns you? I think these. Well, these are newish. Okay. So these spin. I think these spin way more than those. Okay. Yeah, actually, actually about actually about the same. Not too bad. Okay, give me a couple more. Oh, that was thin. So what's the last? Is the last wedge of fifty-eight? It's a sixty. Sixty. Okay. So hit me a couple more because I'm going to tell you there's something I I think we should do to make your life a little easier. I mean, we're a hundred, we're a hundred. We only got about ten, eight to 10 yards between those two wedges. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hit me one more. I'm going to go, I'm going to go bend that wedge for you. Pretty tight gap from attack wedge to 54. So I'm going to go to 55. Yes. Yeah, let me have that. So it is at 55 now. Okay. I like I like I minimum at, at their speed minimum of 15. Yeah. Because if not, then we're down. Then you're down. That last wedge is covering way too much yardage. You're asking way too much of your talent to do that. 
you know, I like that better. That's around 107, 108. So now we're now we're spreading it out at least 12 yards. I mean, before we had 10. A little bit more spin, a little bit. What are your thoughts of, you know, the bulky wedges versus the, the irons, the, the matching? The well, I, like, I don't mind the set wedges at all because really, I mean, honestly, it, you know, it's kind of like what Callaway's done with their new sets where they got the 10 and the 11 iron now. It really has become another pitching wedge. I mean, you know, oh, hey, back in our day, right, a pitching wedge was 50 or 52 degrees. Well, now it's, four, now it's 44 or 46 degrees. It's more like a nine iron. So to me, I don't mind at all that, that the set gap wedge because I think it's an easy transition. You don't have to worry about the spin. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about a big difference in flight going from that to that. How does that feel now? Feels good, yeah. Okay, so do me a favor. Let's hit a few of your 60 and let's see where your 60 goes. And that's our 90 yard club? Yeah. Perfect. So now we got, now we got, now we got better gapping. Now that 54 is 55 and it's going to go less yardage, mm -hmm. but you're going to have a better gap between your, your attack wedge and your, and your pitching wedge, you know? Okay. So I think that works. Any other concerns on the wedges? What would be, what would be, what would be something that where, I guess the question is where in your game when it comes to wedges where you feel uncomfortable? Is there an uncomfortable spot? Is there um, an uncomfortable shot? I wish. I don't like the way. I prefer this look because around greens. I like to play a lower lofted wedge if I had to hit across the green to okay. a back pin and say I'm in So you, you'd, prefer, you'd prefer to look at a Vokey yeah. 50 degree? It, this just it gets in my head that it's like a seven iron. Okay. Well, let me do that. Let me go grab, let me go grab one and I'll be back. See where you had, I mean, you almost could go pitching wedge 52, 56, 60. Yeah. Have you ever had a 52? Never had a 52. I'll be back. <laughs> Trade you. So that's 50, that's 52. Do me a favor, hit your pitching wedge again. <laughs> so that's carrying a few yards far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we're getting, now we're getting your 140 carry. Yeah. You know, your 138, 140. So let's hit that 52 again. You know, I, I mean, honestly, I think you probably need to go 52, 56, 60. Because mm -hmm. that, you know. 50, just, just, because, just because the loft goes, say your pitching wedge is 46 and you think you need a 50 because it's four degrees based on your launch conditions and the distance. So, if, so who cares if it's a six yard, a six degree loft gap? Mm -hmm. You just want a club that you can hit the right distance. Yeah. The last thing you want to be doing is have to constantly back off your wedges. We'd much rather see you be able to hit your wedges full because they create more spin and then you create more control. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a hundred, there's 121 yards. I mean, that's with two degrees, two degrees less loft. Yeah. So that's a better gapping between your pitching wedge in that 52. So, yeah. with that being said, I brought you a 56. Also. <laughs> little preempt, little preemptive strike because I figured I figured we needed to see what 56 <laughs> is going to do. All right. So potentially, if you would just kind of get rid of the, the A. Get rid of the A. Get rid of the 54, and then yeah. just go to yep. just go to fi go 52, 56. Yep. 
you know, and even in his case, you could almost take the 60 and go like the 61. That's where you see on tour, you see a lot of guys 61, 62 degrees yeah, because yeah, yeah. they know they hit it far enough and yeah, you want to create the spin. Plus in the bunkers, I mean, bunkering's not getting any easier. So, you know, having that, having that, lo having that loft at the bottom end is really helpful. I mean that. I mean, right there. That's covering. That's pr covering a pretty good gap. That's the yardage we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like that a whole lot better. So I would go. I would go. Pitching wedge 52, 56, and then you hit your 60, 90 yard. Now you got better gapping. Okay. So, I would just you know, I would I would. I would order that. I would, you know, I don't know how you guys handle your ordering and stuff, but mm -hmm. that's how I would, that's what I would do. So. Have coach get you 52 and a 56. 52 and 56? Yeah. Okay. And rather what, than the 54 and the. Then rather than the 50 and the 54, absolutely. And what I, what I would do is just, I would just put the, I would just put the, I would just put the same shaft in all the wedges. Okay. The 52, 56 and the 60. I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna find. I think you're gonna find out. It's gonna be a lot better for you. Um, what I can do, if you're not gonna get them right, can always. I can weaken your 52 and your 50 or your your A wedge and your 54 for right now. You want to try that? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Let's let's weaken those a little bit so at least give you a little bit better gapping before you get a 52 and a 56. Oh, to the right. There we go. Now. So that, so that's two degrees weaker and it's covering our yardage just perfectly. Yeah. And it, actually, it's better because you were hitting, you were hitting that one up into almost the one thirties before. Mm -hmm. So now it's covering. Now we got about you know eighteen to twenty yards between those two wedges. Now it's way better. Okay. Okay. So let's let's hit now. Let's hit your fifty four that I went to fifty six with, and then I'll just um, I'll just give I'll just give your I'll just give your coach a. What we should order on the 52 and the 56. There you go. There's our, there's our, there's our 106, 107 that we want. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there you go. That's better. So now we've brought the distance back a little bit. We mm -hmm. haven't changed the spin rate much at all. So you're just going to have. You're just going to have a little bit less carry in that, okay. but you're not going to have as much separation now between the 54 and the 60 that you once had. And you're definitely going to be better from pitching wedge to the 52 now. Okay. Because then you're not going to have to worry about. It. Now you got yeah. some distinct yardages. So, you know, before you guys go before you guys go play in Mexico, you just need to figure out the yardages a yeah. little bit. But you know, we all you've done is just lost a couple yards, mm -hmm. but you're going to be way better now. Now you can get out there and actually pick the club, and then decide the shot rather than, hey, which wedge should I hit? Because this one goes this far and this one goes that far. I mean, you're just too close together. So, over the winter time, what year are you in school? Freshman. Okay, so you haven't gone through a winter yet, but I'm guessing you guys got an indoor place, track man to hit it. Yeah, I would spend, you know, get the new wedges and then I would spend a lot of time figuring your wedge yardages, okay. you know, figuring where the figuring where the 100 percent one goes, where the 90 percent one goes, where the 75 percent one goes mm -hmm. and cover your yardages really well, because that's going to help a lot. Yeah. And now your stock yardages are going to be so much better. It's going to make it that it's going to make it that much easier on you, too. OK. Plus, the other thing about it is. If you think about it, now you go into maybe that little three-quarter shot or the little knockdown. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to have more loft, you're going to get it there. And you're going to have more spin than you did with the other loft. Because you're back, 
I'm guessing a lot of wedge shots. You've been backing off a lot of them, right? Uh, yeah. Hitting a lot of, hitting a lot of three quarter ones, and because they're they've been too they've been too close together. Mm -hmm. So, um, do we want to look at we want to look at putter? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Let's go do that. 